We'll combine a couple more uh, ideas regarding pressure uh, with fluids for this, this video. Uh, and we're going to go a little bit out of the order that they're presented in the, uh, um, the AP Physics um, course information. Uh, so we're actually going to start with number 72, the idea of gauge pressure. Uh, gauge pressure is, is just what it sounds like. It's the pressure that a pressure gauge would read. So when you uh, put your pressure gauge onto your uh, car tire to check the pressure there, that's the number that's coming back is the gauge pressure. Now, if your tire is completely flat, the number that you get on your gauge pressure is going to be zero. But if we think about um, that situation, your tire, even though it's flat, still has uh, air inside of it. Um, it's just not as much air, so you still got air molecules inside of your flat tire. Um, still bouncing around inside there. It hasn't become a total vacuum inside your tire by any means. Um, what's, uh, what's causing your tire to be flat is that we have this extra downward force from the weight of the car that's um, not being counteracted by this, um, this pressure um, from the tire. Um, so it's that, that tire is not able to stay, uh, to maintain its shape. There isn't enough force outward um, to maintain that, that roughly circular shape. And tires are always a little flat on the bottom, of course, but um, you know, they, they definitely get more circular than the one that we have drawn. Uh, so if there's still air inside this tire, how can the pressure be zero? We still have collisions with the outside of the tire. Well, that's where the idea of gauge pressure comes in. Gauge pressure isn't the actual pressure inside there. It's the actual pressure or the absolute, uh, absolute pressure minus the ambient pressure, typically atmospheric pressure. So outside we have uh, a pressure of um, about 14.7 psi or 101,000 pascals of pressure in the air. Inside we have 101,000 pascals of pressure, one atmosphere of pressure inside. So these two numbers would be equal to each other, and our gauge pressure would be zero. Now when you patch that tire and inflate it to 30 psi, what that really means is 30 psi more than the atmospheric pressure. So your absolute pressure there would be about 45 psi instead of uh, instead of. 30 psi because we've got about 15 or 14.7 psi um, in the atmosphere. Uh, now down to uh, um, down to the idea of changing depth in a uh, in a fluid and how that affects pressure. We have some sense that as you go deeper and deeper, the pressure gets larger. Uh, we've all seen uh, you know, movies where they go down deep in submarines, and as they get deeper, they start to hear the creaking in the submarine, and oh, will it hold? And um, you know, it's very dramatic, of course. Um, we understand that as they get deep, the amount of pressure gets very, very large. Now we can think of this in terms of the the weight of water that's above. Uh, our submarine, or whatever our object is that's, that's down at the bottom, uh, or down below the surface of this liquid. Uh, so I've drawn this out. I have uh, the, the darker blue to represent sort of the general, um, say this is water, but any fluid um, in a container. And then the lighter blue, that represents the, uh, the water that's directly above some object here that has a cross-sectional area A. Um, and so we have this column of water up above that then. Um, the column of water has uh, a height h, and we're looking for the density, or sorry, the, the pressure at the bottom of that column of water. Now up above that water, let's say we have air at one atmosphere of pressure. So whatever pressure this weight of water is causing um, at this location, we're also going to add to that the atmospheric pressure at that point, or the pressure of, of this gas or this other fluid up top here just gets added on to whatever this causes. Uh, so we need to figure out the pressure, and we know that pressure is equal to force divided by area. Well, the force that we're talking about here is going to be the weight of this quantity of water. So the pressure is equal to weight times the area, or sorry, divided by the area. Um, we're not given the weight, though. Let's see if we knew 
uh, mass, and we, uh, we know value for gravity, we can calculate it that way, mg over a. But again, we're not given a mass. So here we need to know something about the density of the water. Um, density, we use the symbol rho, um, and that's equal to the, the mass divided by the volume of the water. And since the volume can be written as the cross-sectional area, A, times the height, H, I can rewrite this as A times H. So now if I rearrange this a little bit, I've got uh, A, H, times rho is equal to M, rho being the density again. So now I can substitute that in. The pressure is equal to A, H, rho, times G, divided by the cross-sectional area. And the areas cancel, and we find that the pressure at the bottom is going to be equal to, remember we said we we're going to add this pressure at the very end, so that P naught, probably atmospheric pressure uh, at this point, plus, and then it's going to be rho, uh, let's see what order they do it in, yep, rho first, times H, uh, try and keep it the same order as the equation sheet, rho times g times h. So this term here, rho times g times h, that corresponds to the, uh, the weight of this water above this point divided by the area over which that force is acting. And we just add that to the pressure up at the top of this fluid. So the pressure down here, it's going to get larger as we get further and further down. And you can see that the cross-sectional area at the bottom, that term dropped out uh, up in this step, so that's no longer a part of our equation. So the pressure down at this point is independent of the size of the object that we're looking at, the, the area of the object that we're looking at. All it depends on is the density of this fluid, the amount of gravity there, and this depth, H. And the last thing that we need to do with this is be able to, uh, to identify areas where pressure would be equal. Well, since we've uh, established that the only things that matter are the density of the water and the amount of gravity and the depth, H, um, since density and amount of gravity, those are probably going to be fixed, then we're going to have equal pressure in areas that have an equal depth. So if I draw a horizontal line anywhere on this diagram, I've got the same pressure here as I do here, because they're both at the same depth, h. And even if I don't have a direct connection, I'll have the same pressure here as I do here, because these are both at the same depth. Maybe call that h prime. And then another horizontal line here, and here, those are at the same depth, maybe h double prime. So I'll have the same pressure here as we do here. All that matters is the density of this fluid that's, uh, that's in this tube, uh, the amount of gravity, and these various uh, values for h, the depth.